Welcome back to Disco Elysium, the Ballad of Officer Superstar. When we left off, our heroes had just spoken to Titus asking him to help the pigs. And speaking of the pigs, we did acquire a few items that we wanted to look at from her. So first, there's the Villers 9mm Pepper Box Pistol. Equip this when times are most dire. A three-shot revolving barrel Villers LaSalle Pepper Box, typically assigned to officers of the RCM upon reaching the rank of sergeant. The butt of the gun is worn, and the engraving on the side reads, Sunrise, Parabellum. This is your gun. No doubt about it. Then we also got a hat. Yes, we got a hat. RCM Lieutenant's Cap, plus one authority, member of an organization. The cap is sturdy and comfortable, and seems to retain its form very well. It fits you perfectly. The inside of it smells like cheap tobacco and typewriter ink. It feels very familiar, somehow. Perhaps it too is yours, though how the pigs got it is a mystery. Then we have... Oh... These are the speakers from the Republic of Samara, which I thought we could use for something, or I hoped we could use for something, but we could sell for 30 real and only cost us 50 cents. And then that's it. We didn't finish the Dick Mullen thing, but we're at the end and we haven't read The Greatest Innocence yet. We also got a new thought that we could consider called Cop of the Apocalypse. Cop of the Apocalypse, temporary research bonus minus one rhetoric because we're a rambling madman. Research time is six hours and 55 minutes. The problem is, you woke up in a hotel room and started rambling about the end of the world. It's not your normal everyday doom crying either. Something truly colossal is approaching. The gloaming, the culling, the bloodletting of unimaginable proportions. Until now, you've been pleasantly vague about the precise nature of this cataclysm. No more! Put the bloodletting on the burner and really figure out what's the threatening the fragile physical reality you just found yourself in. So, we have one thought slot left. This sounds really interesting, but then so do the rest of these things. We're still working on Wasteland of Reality. We have almost 10 hours left. Uh, so we're going to come back to this. We have nine points to spend. So we're going to have to start spending some points. Maybe we will undo. We can forget thoughts for a point as well. And then let's just go quickly review our tasks. So we have to join the reading group, which I think is what we're going to do next. We're going to take Kim along with us. I don't know if we can do it while he's with us, but we'll try. We have figurines to give to Dolores Day, but I don't even know where those are. We have to talk to Klaji about what happened Sunday night, but we can't do it with Kim, so we'll do that when he's asleep. We are still working to determine where the shot came from. We need to check an island that I don't know what the island is. And the boardwalk, we've already checked at least three times with nothing. So maybe there's a bug or maybe there's something I'm missing. I'm not sure. And then we, of course, are still searching for Ruby along the coast. And since we have no further clues, we're going to go back to the failed R&D mural. But right now, like I said, we're going to go try to join the reading club. So let's head over there gentlemen. So I also have been realizing that we might be near the end of the game because if Ruby didn't do it, then either Klaji or one of the other mercenaries killed Lele. And if you also saw that list of tasks I just went through, we have almost none left. Whereas before I had to scroll through a whole bunch and all that kind of thing. So let's see what we can find out. Maybe we should check the the dock down here where Joyce's boat was hitched up before. But first, let's go to the reading group. I'm going to try to stay focused. Come on, guys. Okay, we're going to walk right past Cindy. I'm going to go over here. And this is where the reading group is. Hello, guys. Okay, nothing new on tab. The gendarme returns. What do you need? Yes, we have returned. Let's point to the art supplies. I'm guessing these pots of gauche belong to Cindy? Uh, yeah, it's hers. She just sort of moved it all in a few months ago. She said if she's going to make truly radical art, she needs a suitably radical workspace. And I don't think she could afford rent at an actual studio. You guys like her art? Oh, sure. It's definitely interesting, I would say. Wait, I thought interesting was what people said when they don't have anything real to add. His companion's eyes widen with interest. He has a cold smile. If this is what the Union man meant by theory combat, you've just scored a decisive blow. How interesting. <laughs> Come on. It's not that I don't have anything to say about Cindy's art. It's more that I'm still working out the details. It's a complex question. You've got to take your time with it. Uh-huh. He's got to think up something, some bullshit to spew. You flustered the poor boy. Now he's got to say something. He sure does. Hmm. 
I guess you could call her latest stuff a sort of counter-bourgeoisie calligraphy. She's got a real taste for radical slogans. What did you just say? Buzzword, 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 buzzword? It's too bad she hasn't developed the theoretical foundation to do truly radical work. These guys are trying to sound erudite, and they just sound condescending and silly. I think she'll get there, though. She's still looking for a subject equal to her ambitions. Now I'm wondering, what's the deal with this place? The deal? At a fundamental level, I guess you could call it the shattered bones of a dream crushed by capital. That's really good, Stepan. You should save that for an essay. Thanks, Uli. When the idea is sound, the words just sort of flow. I knew people like this in college. Shit, maybe I was somebody like this in college. Ugh. Yes. Now keep developing the idea. If this place is the Shattered Bones, that must make us the Bone Weevils. Hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I didn't think it was bad either. Not as good as Stepan's original idea, though. Oh, uh, whatever. Okay, let's move on. Go ahead. Oh, yes. We want to try to join the group. Uh, we have a 4 composure and a 42% chance, and I don't know what plus 6 from the Proud Bookshop Ruminant is, but... I'm glad to have it. All right, let's leave and up our composure. Composure shoes. Oh, composure jacket. I don't believe we have a composure tie. So there we go. Plus two composure. So we should have a six composure. Let's give this a shot. The gendarme returns. What do you need? Okay, we now have a 72% chance to convince them to that we belong in the reading group. And if we fail, maybe we'll throw another point into composure. Oh no, we failed. Morbid, yeah? There seems to be a little pool of sweat forming in the depression of your lower back. No, I'm not nervous. I'm a superstar. Oh, totally. A superstar breaking out in a cold sweat. Why is this happening? I thought I had my shit together. You did. You must be extremely nervous for some reason. Why am I getting so worked up? They're just a couple of kids. Let's be frank. They're probably way smarter than you. You bet they've read more books than you can even name. Hey, we are almost done with the Dick Mullen book. Oh, I guess I kind of see your point. You've been quite studious these past few days. You should be able to handle whatever they want to throw your way. Thank you, Rhetoric. The hardest part will just be working up the nerve to ask without soiling yourself. Wow. I mean, there's no sort of in-between where we have a hard time working ourselves up and we just, you know, quiver or something. We have to actually poop our pants. Everything all right, Gendarme. You look a little green about the gills. Yeah, I'm going to need a moment to just step back and maybe, mm, I don't know, add a point to composure. Let's do it. This is even consistent with the fact that we are a superstar because we got one more. We got a max of six. Let's do it. One point into composure. And we're going to try again. The gendarme returns. We do return. What do you need? We need to convince you that we belong in the reading group. What's there oh, to be God. scared of? You've really been cracking the books these last few days. You can go toe to intellectual toe with any reading group in Martinez. Damn right we can. You've spent a not inconsiderable amount of time arranging the works in your mental library by theme and period. All the ideas and references you'll need are ready at hand. Now, chin up. You've got this. All right, I think we're going to crack our knuckles and say, all right, let's do this interview. Oh, you want to start now? Sure, we can manage that. You've caught him off balance. The momentum is already in your favor. The momentum is always in a superstar's favor. Go ahead and take a seat. Since we haven't had time to prepare an exhaustive questionnaire, I think we can keep this interview more freeform. Why don't you tell us a bit about the books you're interested in? And we'll just see where the conversation goes. Look, guys, I gotta be honest. I may not have read many books, but that doesn't mean I don't have stories. Okay, we'll bite. What sort of stories are we talking about? How about a tale of adventure, intrigue, and daring do? Definitely daring do. Give them sex and drugs. They're clearly not getting any on their own. Yeah, I bet they're not. Let's just say the human body starts to do some weird things when it's been in a tree for seven days. You've got our attention. Let's see where this goes. Yeah, let's see where it goes. Yes, I'm rather curious myself. <laughs> As am I, Kim. You've got them. They're starting to loosen up. You're relaxed and in control. You deftly weave every piece of the story together. Oh, I was hoping we would actually get to weave it ourselves. Even the lieutenant seems engrossed, despite your revealing details of an RCM investigation. 
right? Because we're a pillar of professionalism. Okay, but when you say he spoke to you, you mean metaphorically, right? Right, of course. I'm really talking about my top-notch forensic skills. The work he did on the autopsy was quite good, I can confirm. So have you figured out his real identity? Indeed we have. Another quarter of an hour disappears. The conversation bounces back and forth. Whatever their pretensions, it's clear these two have been craving something real. Now you can sense things starting to slow down. Time to wrap this tale up. But I'm still not sure how love did him in. There has to be some other element to it. We don't have the full story yet. Perhaps, but that thread of the story is still unresolved. I suppose we'll have to leave it there. But listen, Gendarme. We could use someone with your breadth of expertise. With just a little more theoretical background, I think you'll be able to make some real contributions. Thank you, condescending prick. Yes, I would say he's got serious potential at least. And with that, welcome to the most ideologically advanced materialist reading group in Martinez. We're not materialist. Here's your first assignment. It's an overview of inframaterialist theory. A little basic, as you'll see, but one has to start somewhere. Nice, we got this book, A Brief Look at Inframaterialism. I'll add it to my very extensive reading list. You're going to fit right in, I think. Come back when you're done. We'll be here pretty much every night after 10 p.m. Okay, no problem. Do be sure to take your time with the reading. We'll be eager to hear your thoughts. Oh, I'll be eager to hear my own thoughts. Because they're always entertaining in this game. All right, okay, another task down. So we've got the book. Here it is. It's a concise introduction to inframaterialist theory intended for a general audience. You can tell this particular copy has spent a lot of time in someone's back pocket. We are definitely not reading that right now. Okay, now we have a new task in Get Yourself Organized. Let's read a brief look at inframaterialism, which we will do, but we're not going to do it right now. Instead, I think we're going to go put Kim to bed and see if we can talk to Klaji about Sunday night. So let's run off and do that. I do want to just run down to the dock where Joyce's boat used to be and see if there's anything of interest there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of unreasonably upset about not being able to get a paintbrush from Cindy because I, I really wanted to paint something on that art wall. I wanted to see what that was. It also seems kind of consistent with uh, Superstar's character, artiness. Let's see what this orb says. Went to the village on the coast, officer. See you there, Joyce, the note says. Hey, what? Is that? What is that? Is that a thing? No, nothing on tab. Okay, well, so we already found Joyce there. So let's head back to the whirling, maybe? Uh, let's see if we can call the 57th. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. All right, let's pick up the radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Hi, Alice. Did you find out more about the owner of the armored boots? Yes. I got Whoa. the his name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? Wow, I thought... Well, wait a minute, we already have all this. I thought we were never going to get this. Let's go. The lieutenant leans in to listen. Notebook in hand. I was born ready, baby. That suit of armor was issued to an Orani citizen named Elis Cortenaer. That's E-L-L-I-S-K-O-R-T-E-N-A-E-R. Exact date of birth, unknown. He was signed into the Lelystad County Neonatal Care Unit on 28th of February, 09. Neonatal Care Unit? He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned oh, farm. Oh, Jesus. He spent four months in the Neonatal Unit, survived apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. Wow, that's a horrible beginning. This is what the ICD knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered the East Brand Military Academy in Vredefort at 17, then served in the Oranese forces till he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did. And that's it. There are no records of his employment in Crenel, or any of his other incarnations, or him even entering Ravachon. Wow. So, wait, he was found in a leaf compactor? It's a garden tool used to press leaves into these cubes. It's a detail the hospital had, the only detail in these files. 
So I thought it would be good for you to know. Yeah, that is truly horrible. It is. Thank you, Alice. Any information on his foster parents, Alice? None, officer. Sorry. Okay, so all we have to connect him to Cornell is the armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double-check their inventory. Thank you, Alice. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. Thank you, Alice. Well, we have his name and service record now. Name. This is very good. Elise Cortenard. But we... we knew who he was. This is a little bit out of order. But we couldn't get it until... ah, uh, whatever. So we just got 70 more experience, so we replaced the point we just spent. I'm glad the inquiry was helpful to your investigation, officer. Did you have any other questions? Yeah, please connect me to Sylvie. I don't know why I'm doing this, but let's do it. Just a second, officer. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes, hello? Hey, Sylvie, it's the police again. Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Hey, do you want to grab a cup of coffee with me sometime? No, absolutely not. <laughs> All right, it was worth a shot. We took some morale damage. Let's end the call. You hear the call breaking up on the other end of the radio, and then the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? No, Alice, thanks so much. 57th, over and out. Oh, I guess we could have In talked the cabin, to the 41st. You see a set of steering okay. levers, a radio. Yeah, I could have called the 41st, I guess. Anyway, let's go see if we can put Kim to bed. All right, t Kim, time for you to go to bed. It's getting late, and it's raining. Time to call it a day. Good night, Kim. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Sounds good. Let's go in our shack. Alright, can we shave? I think this is hand-eye. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red. Hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. You know what? That is part of Superstar's goal. So I think we're going to do that. We're going to burn a point into hand-eye coordination. Let's put on our hand-eye coordination gear because I know we got those found shoes. Where are they? So here we go. One to hand-eye. That might be the only bit of hand-eye coordination stuff we have. I think Superstar is ready to begin anew. So we're going to drop a point into hand-eye. Let's go. I'm just burning through our points here. Boom, we'll accept that. So now we've got four. Let's see what our chance is. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Do we want to try the speed? No, let's just try this. Let's just try this. Like an artist oh, we did it. brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender, the air brushing against it chilly. Look at this. We're shaved, and now we look, now we can see the look, the face. Ooh. But I still think it is better. All right, let's feel our clean shaven cheeks. They feel so smooth, surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. Very nice. We're shaving the right call, though? The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little younger, maybe. You almost look like a professional. Wow. The beardless nature of your cheeks makes the expression seem even more like a terrifying grimace. Very nice. That's awesome. So, a couple things. Let's see if we can... Uh, ask Lillian on a date since we're here and it's and we were without Kim. Is she still here? She is, and maybe shaving helped. I the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on wow. your mind, officer? We have an eight percent chance. Okay, once again, we're gonna try changing some clothes. Suggestion, suggestion, suggestion. Okay, let's see what that one point gives us. Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. 
The wind is turning southeast. What's on Five your mind, more. officer? No. Nine more. I I'm not going to do a parole it on on this. Jesus. We suck. You know what? We are. We're going to do it. This is just a white check anyway. She needs to go on a date with another drunk. Badly. Oh, yes, she does. You need to get your drink on. There is no other way for human beings to procreate. Not after 6,000 years of yeast cultivation based mating rituals. Oh, I wonder if we drink alcohol whether we'll get a plus. I'm going to say this one. I like you, but I'm afraid to be around you because you're a woman. Because I think that is how he feels now. Okay. Where is this going? I need to be drunk. You do too. Please get drunk with me on a drunk date. Absurdly and pointedly phrased. You can be quite funny, officer. Anyway, what did you want? Uh, this is embarrassing for everybody involved. She doesn't even understand. You asked her out. Perhaps you're too sober to pull it off right now. <laughs> Try again later. Yeah, so we're going to need to get drunk to make that work. And we will take the parole on when we do it. So we'll have to come back to that. Be seeing you. Well, that was embarrassing. That was definitely embarrassing. Let's put our other jacket back on. Okay, so now we need to go talk to Klaji. No, no, Two no. neon lit shapes, a man and a woman having sex. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside, A prime, to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez, B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. Since we're here, we can see, here's the boardwalk, here's Land's End, and here's the island. So we have, this is a, I, I think this is a place we've never been to. So we're gonna probably have to take Joyce's boat to get there. So I'm not sure how to do that yet. We'll have to talk to Joyce about it. But it turns out that Klaji went against her word and went out at night because she is, unless she's in the bathroom, let's barge in on her. Nope, she is not here. Did she get more drugs? This medicine cabinet is stocked with drugs, plus an old toothbrush. Pill bottles rattle like necra. This nope, is nothing. Okay. So this has been fruitless. The so Klaji went out, even though she promised she wouldn't, unless she's sitting here, which she isn't. Let's see if Gart knows anything about it. Hey, was there something you needed? Nope, goodbye. Okay, I'm not sure how we're going to get rid of Kim when it's not bedtime and Klaji is out. So I'm not sure what to do next. I think we're going to leave it there. When we come back next time, we're going to do some reading before we are forced to go to bed so we can get uh, through the Dick Mullen book. And we'll also read the brief look at intra infra materialism. But until then, thank you very much for your support and viewership. I love you very much. Please remember to have your pets spayed or neutered. <laughs>